Plants on the planet are at the crossroads. About half the aerial extent of the planet occupied by wild plant diversity is now sequestered by humans for other, other purposes. In terms of the species of plants on the planet, we estimate there's 400,000. About a fifth of them are threatened in some way. When something is in danger, there are many ways you could look after it. You could look after it where it is, and that's probably the most ideal. But when you can't do that, you have to bring it into the lab and into the nursery. And that's exactly what they're doing here at Kew Gardens. We're going to take a look at a few examples. So we're in the tropical nursery and we're in the uh, lowland nepenthes zone. So this is where we grow a lot of our lowland, more tropical growing carnivorous plants. Well, you're here to show us this rare plant here. And these gourds are tiny compared to some of the mammoths we've seen back there. What's so special about this one? This one is uh, Nepenthes rob cantlii. It's from Mindanao in the Philippines. And um, it's under critically endangered because it's not known enough about the habitat to know there is any left. It could be extinct in the wild, it could not be. So now we can work, grow it on, collect seed, get a backup collection, and hopefully one day it could be reintroduced into the wild. Do you have a more um, proactive programme to go out there and find rare things and collect their seeds? Yeah, through the Millennium Seed Bank we've got a lot of work going on working with countries to preserve their own flora. So in that case, seeds are collected, they're stored in our Millennium Seed Bank. There's also a backup seed bank always set up in the country of origin. So tell us what this plant is. Well, this is a plant which the, the locals in Mauritius call the coral tree. And how important is this plant for the biodiversity of that area? I mean, why concentrate on one plant? Trying to decide which is worth preserving or not is a risky business. In this one, as you can see, for example, the flower morphology indicates that it is pollinated by butterfly. We don't know if it's a main food of a species of butterfly. Then the berries, they, they, they look like the typical berry which is uh, eaten by a, a, a bird. Now in Mauritius there is both endemic butterflies and endemic birds, so that may be affecting this. If you lose a butterfly, you may lose the pollinator of another tree, which maybe is of use for the locals, or maybe is... Uh, so there's an entire network exactly. of plants and animals that you might be forcing to fall down if, if this had disappeared. Yes, yes, it's, it's all interlinked. And so what happens next? You've grown these ones. Uh, will they go back to Mauritius, or will you keep them here in case there's more danger well, over there? Well, in order to do so, we need to be able to propagate it. So in the process of securing this in queue, we will learn how to easily propagate this plant. Once this is done, then we will repatriate some to Mauritius. Margaret, where are we? This looks so different to the tropical nursery. Well, this is a conservation biotechnology unit, uh, but I like to think of it as the intensive care unit. Basically, we grow plants under controlled light and temperature regimes. Um, so we've got the high lighting levels here and the, the fans basically keep that to an even temperature. And then we grow plants here from all, all around the world, but those that are particularly difficult to grow using conventional techniques. This is the baby I'm growing at the moment. It might not look very much. but No, this, it looks it. like three splodges of green <laughs> something. This is actually uh, the uh, anagramma essentially, the parsley, the Ascension Island parsley fern. Um, it was actually thought to be extinct until a couple of years ago. And then they found there's just one clump on the side of a rock. And then that came here. We had a third of the world population, so no pressure. Um, and then basically we sowed the spores um, on, the nutri on this nutrient ag uh, agar and got those spores to germinate into very similar plants like this. What are the advantages of this environment compared to a normal greenhouse in terms of looking after delicate things? It's more about the, the range of te extra techniques we can offer. Because we're growing under sterile conditions and supplying all the nutrients, we can also do things like uh, we're difficult to germinate seed, we can remove the seed coat, we can give them long soaps and they're not having to fight with pathogens in the soil or anything like that. They're also, from very small amounts of tissue, we can build up large amounts of stock, you know, so just if we have a few seeds, we can still produce very many plants from those. We've seen some of the places around Kew Gardens where you can regrow things, put them back. There's a lot of stuff going on here. 
But individually, what can people do? People can do individual things, uh, even if they live in an inner city apartment. You can grow a few plants inside and on, on your balcony, um, through to um, people making a major effort to care for uh, the big areas of wild diversity that are, are near them and the plant diversity that really matters to them for, for food, for pharmaceuticals. Everyone is reliant on plants, every breath you and I take, plants are giving to us. Uh, think of what you had for breakfast this morning, the coffee you had, uh, it goes on and on. So we, we, we really are partnered with plants in a way that people tend uh, not to think about and yet is vital for our survival into the future.